Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this one is the first lesson of the sixth unit linear functions. We're going to start by talking about the slope of a line uh, and we are going to measure it in one way in this lesson and we're going to advance uh, in future lessons. Uh, then we're going to use the slope uh, to determine other equations uh, of a line and um, essentially the slope is the basis of what we're going to be using for this unit. So. Uh, the first couple of lessons are pretty important, um, and if you pay attention and do the work, I think also fairly straightforward. Um, so, the slope of a line can essentially be thought of as like how much um, does the slope of a roof um, differ? Is it very steep? Is it very shallow? Um, essentially, we measure that in how much it goes up, which is the rise or how much it is over towards the peak, which is the run. Um, the entire roof is called the span, and then the angle of it is known as the slope. Um, so we measure the steepness of a roof by calculating its slope. Uh, so slope is equal to rise divided by run. How much it goes up uh, divided by how much it moves over. So if I make a graph, kind of like what you have on the right, but um, less fancy. Each line represents one. And if I'm going this way, that's negative. So this would be negative three and this would be positive three. When you're going up, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this would be positive three. And this would be negative three. So each tick represents one. When I'm talking about the slope, let's say I have a line that goes from, let's say, 2, 2, negative 2, negative 2, that point right there, to, uh, let's say, this point right here. We label the points. Um, this is, if from the uh, review lesson, you would be able to label this as negative 2 in the x and negative 2 in the y. And this one is 2 positive and one positive for the y, we would be able to count the slope, uh, the rise and the run for this line. Uh, if we count, it goes one, two, three, four up. So that means that the rise is four and it moves over one, two, let's see, three, four, I, I, I just made a mistake. It goes up one, two, three, not four. And it moves over four, one, two, three, four. So the rise is three and the run is four, which means that the slope is three quarters, three over four. Uh, so anytime we see um, a line, we can count how much it goes up or down and how much it moves over to find out what its slope is. Um, you can see in your document, um, we plot the dependent variable on the y-axis and the independent variable on the x-axis. Um, and then the slope is the rise over run. It is the change in y over the change in x. Um, that little triangle, delta, means change in. So when we say change in y, that is the rise. And when we say change in x, that is the run. Uh, so some examples here. I know they're not the best diagrams, but that's okay. Um, you can see we have um, the examples say to determine the slope of the following line segments. So we have a line segment and we have point A. Point A, um, if we count how far it up uh, point B is from it, we would go one, two, three, four, five, six. So the rise for that particular line, rise is equal to six. The run, how much does it go over? Well, that goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 over. So the run is 10. So the slope is six over 10, but I actually always want to have it in lowest terms. So it is actually three over five. That is our slope for that first problem. Uh, we can do the same thing with the other one, but instead of having a positive number for our rise, because it goes down to the right, 
we are going to have a negative value for our rise. So uh, if we count how far it goes down, I'm just going to slide this down so I can see. Uh, it goes down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 down. So the rise is equal to negative 10. And the run is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over. So that's negative 10 over 5, which is actually negative 2. So the slope for that uh, graph to the right is negative 2. So if it is sloped downwards to the right, we get a negative slope. And if it is sloped upwards to the right, it is a positive slope. Uh, it's important to be able to tell the difference if you know uh, that it should be negative and you get a positive, you've done something incorrectly. Okay, let's go on to a couple of special cases. So it's very important to know the slope of two special cases. One is a horizontal line and the other is a vertical line. So horizontal line is sideways, as you can see, and the slope is zero. Um, we say that the slope is zero because um, the rise is zero and the run is going to be some number. Uh, I'm going to write it as infinity, but that really could just be any number. Um, now, this number goes into zero, zero times. So this equals zero. So our slope for a horizontal line is known as zero. Um, because the rise over run, we get zero over a number. Um, zero, anything divided into zero is zero. If you have a vertical line, so that is up and down, um, that means that the run is zero and the rise is some number. Um, zero goes into any number, like an infinite number of times. We can't um, comprehend how many times zero can go into any number, right? Infinite times, it could go in there forever. So that means that um, a vertical line has an undefined slope. So anytime you have a vertical line, the slope is undefined because zero goes into a number infinite times. Whenever you have a horizontal line, the slope is zero because that number goes into zero, zero times. It is two uh, specific special cases. Um, so the rule, any horizontal line segment has a slope of zero. Any vertical line segment has a slope that is undefined. Um, just something to remember. It's tough to practice that. Um, but what we can do is we can practice drawing a line segment with the slope given. So let's do that. I'll draw a graph quickly first. I'm not going to label any, any lines, but each dash is going to equal 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, uh, if we have a line segment with the slope of five over three, let's just choose a point. Let's start at the origin. Let's start right here. Okay, so I've chosen zero, zero is the first point, and the rise is five, the run is three. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, and go over one, two, three. So I'm going to have a point here. That means that my line is going to look something like that. You only need two points on the line to um, draw any line at all. You just connect them and extend it past. Um, we can do the same thing for another line. Let's just do it on the same grid, but let's do it in a different color. If you look to the right, uh, we want negative two, two fifths. So let's start at the point two, two this time. I'm gonna start there, okay? and. This time we're going to go down two and over five. So we're gonna go one, two onto this line and over five. One, two, three, four, five. So that'd be right here. So then I'd be able to draw my line. That's not great, but you get the idea. Sorry about that. So that line goes through those points. Um, all we've done is picked a point and then counted down two and over five. You see the negative slope has a slope down to the right. So that's good. And the positive slope has one that is up and to the left. 
So that is also good. Um, that is something that's very important to be able to notice. If you have a negative slope, it should be going down. Um, I believe we have one more example. Yes, one more example. So we are going to determine the slope given um, if we're given two points. So let's do that. We are going to draw ourselves a grid. Let's do it in black. Okay. Five. And remember that this way is negative and down is negative. So this would be negative five. This would be five. This would, sorry, negative five down here. This would be five and this would be five. So we are going to determine the slope of a line that passes through C and D. Negative three, negative four, negative three. That would be this point right here. Negative four, one, two, three, four. Negative three, one, two, three. Right here is point C negative 4, negative 3. Uh, we have point D, 2, 1. So positive 2, 1, that's right here. And then I can connect those lines. That's a perfectly straight line. Draw arrows to show that it goes farther. And what it wants to know is the slope of the line. So we can now have two points that we can count the rise and the run. So rise over run. So it goes up from negative 3 to 0 and then up to 1. So that would be up 4. And it goes over from negative 4 to 0 is 4 and then over 2 more that's 6. I need to reduce that to 2 thirds and that is the slope of the line connected by um, connecting those two points. Um, it's as easy as drawing the line and then counting and reducing the fraction. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, thanks very much for watching.